Greetings, Earthlings. My name is OBT. In our last video, I presented you with the nine dot puzzle. If you haven't watched Ever Wonder How to Travel Between Your Ego and Your Inner Essence, pause now and go find out the question. Now, here is the answer. If you start in the top right corner, move diagonally downward, up once, diagonally downward the other way, and connect it back, you've successfully connected all nine dots with four lines without lifting your pen from the paper. Well, that's all for me for right now. OBT is O-U-T. Hello, good people. Welcome back to our ninth video. This one is called Ever Wonder How to Pick the Right Therapy and Therapist. Having taught many sophomore, junior, and senior counseling classes at Lesley University for the past 40 years, I can't tell you how often a student has asked me, how do I pick the right therapist? How do I pick the right therapy? And there are books that have been published recently that are entitled 400 Types of Current Psychotherapies. So the overwhelming number of options and possibilities make it a really tricky task. In fact, in class, I will goof on the students sometimes and say, you probably each spend more time picking the right pair of shoes that you want than picking a therapist that you want or a type of therapy that you want. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it does for many of you. But it would be great if people had a much better understanding of how to choose first a therapy, therapy, a type of therapy, and second, how to choose an individual therapist in that type of therapist, okay? OBT just went over the nine dot problem with you all. And what we saw there is people, many people, if not most people, tend to assume that those nine dots become a square and there is a boundary there. And their boundary is you can't go beyond the nine dots. And the way to solve that problem is to realize that there is no boundary there. That boundary was made up and boundaries can always be made up. And if you allow yourself to go beyond the boundary, oftentimes answers to puzzles and answers to questions become obvious or apparent where there was no clue what was going on ahead of time. Does that make sense? Once again, I hope so. So when choosing a therapy, I'm gonna go with therapies first of all. The dilemma is how do I begin to look at what's possible taking the nine dots and all the boundaries away? So let me start with, oftentimes when we're solving problems or deciding in therapy what my identity is and what the issue is, I think we tend to put a box on what we're doing, okay? So one quote from No Boundary, which is one of my favorite books by Ken Wilber, um, and we'll chat, this whole, this, this whole piece is from this book, quite honestly. We've chatted about Ken Wilber before. One of his quotes is, there are many levels of identity available to an individual. And I think when choosing a type of therapy, looking at what level of identity you are looking at and working on and trying to heal is the first important question. So let's go right there. We're looking at the therapies. The first type of therapy is looking at the ego. Our ego is made up of two parts, a persona and a shadow. And the persona is the part of my ego, the part of my personality, the part of myself that I want people to know about. It's the social part, the part that I lead with when people ask me what I'm doing, who I am, and all that stuff. The shadow is the part that I'm not really proud about, and I particularly don't want people to know the shadow, and oftentimes I get embarrassed if somebody knows parts of my shadow. At Leslie, oftentimes I'll go into a classroom and I'll see a bunch of paper plates on the, on the walls, and on each of the paper plates, what I'll see on the front of it is, I am a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm an art therapist, I am proud, I am bold, I am all these things that they want people. I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I have two, two best friends. Um, this is where I live, this is, this is what my parents do. Defining stuff about who we are that we'd like people to know. And I've learned that if I take those plates and look at the back of those plates, there are other words on the back of the plates. And the words on the black back of the plates are, I'm a little bit angry all the time. I've got certain people in my life that I have so much resentment for and about that I don't know what to do with it. I think I'm a little more critical with my best friends and lovers than I ought to be. And I know that that's an example of persona and shadow, which is the front of the plate, is stuff that the student is willing to have put on a wall and have everybody see it. 
and the back of the plate, which is hidden unless you know to look at it, are these qualities and parts and roles about the person that they just don't quite know what to do with, okay? Now in therapy, that's the mind in the mind because the personality is us looking at our mind, okay? And the mind is the part that I want people to know and the part that I don't want people to know. And I think you all understand that from lived experiences so far. So the ego comes up with two parts. I know I'm saying this again, the persona and the shadow. And many therapists, that's where they work. That's the type of therapy they do, which is to help an individual look at the shadow part and begin to shine some light there and make it a little more public, first to the person, to the client, to the client self so that this part that I've been burying forever, I can begin to say hello to and begin to befriend and at least have some relationship with. And then the question is, are there any people in my world that I begin to share this with at all? But a lot of forms of therapy is basically on an egoic level and it's basically taking the persona and making it larger and taking the shadow and making it a little bit smaller. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, and I think it does for most people because I think we all know parts of our personality that we are embarrassed about and hide and parts of our personality that we will gladly put out there. So that's the first part and it's called the egoic map or part of who we are. And it's the mind and the mind. It's all mental there. Okay. Next piece would be the mind and the body. Okay. So, or the ego and my body. Let's look at that one. You ever have a moment when you're having so much fun or you're so engaged in something or you're so stuck in something that all of a sudden you kind of go, I'm so hungry or I so need to go to the bathroom. That would be your body probably giving you messages for a while going, need to eat, need to eat, need to eat, need to go to the bathroom, need to go to the bathroom. But the mind being so focused elsewhere on what's going on that those body messages are hardly being heard. Not that the body isn't having that experience, but the relationship between the mind and the body has been separated. And again, the second type of therapy is getting cues from the body, which is called somatic psychology, and being able to bring those cues into therapy. Let me give you one, fun's the wrong word. It was fun for me. It probably wasn't fun for the person that lived through this. I had a roommate 30 years ago, very attractive, talented woman, who for probably over a year hadn't had a lover and it was making her crazy. And one night she didn't come home, a group of us were living together. And when she walked in the next morning, her whole left side was moving as if she had been paralyzed. There was no fluidity in the musculature, but there was a huge smile on her face. And when she came in the door, the first thing she said was, I met this guy, we were kissing each other all night long in his car, which would explain what side of her, the guy was on and what side of her had room to breathe. Imagine from that part of her body all night long screaming, going, we need blood. You may lose an arm here. You may lose a leg here, but the body giving messages to the mind and the mind going, it's been a year. This guy is kissing me now. I couldn't care about anything but focusing on these, this moments of kissing that's happening. Once again, the schism, the, the separation between the mind and the body. So if the first level of counseling is trying to combine the shadow and the persona so that there's more of a connectedness there, the second part of therapy would be looking at the body and the messages coming from the body and trying to bring that together with the mind. Okay, first one's mind, mind. Second one is mind, body. The third map would be, and let me give you examples first of all. You ever, have you ever been in a room with a group of people and all of a sudden one person is about to enter the room and as soon as that person enters the room, the entire room becomes down or the entire room becomes up. So the question is before that person says anything, the effect of that person on a vibrational or energetic level is going to affect other people in that room. It's not the person's mind saying anything. It's not the person's body saying anything. It's the third map is our own vibrations and energy that usually come in the door before the body of the person does. Another example, have you ever been talking to someone and all of a sudden you feel that someone behind you is staring at you 
and you turn around and you catch them staring at you, once again, that's not your mind. Your mind thinking something's going on, but would have no clue that there's a person behind you staring at you. Your body doesn't know that because your eyes are facing the other direction. But again, on a vibrational or energetic level, there's something you know about the situation that is beyond the mind and beyond the body between the environment and the body. So the third map is your environment and the body. And looking at how messages from the environment can also be connected to the body and the mind. Let's take this another way as well. Have you ever had a moment where you are about to walk into a room and all of a sudden you just get once again a feeling that there's something not safe in there for you? And again, you've not, it's not a mental thing yet because you've not been in the room yet. It's not a body thing yet because you've not been in the room yet. But somehow, there, again, there's some degree of knowingness that's happening on a vibrational or energetic level. Okay? So the three maps are the one is mind to mind. And if you want therapy that's working on your persona and your shadow, looking at how parts of your mind are hidden and you need to bring them out into the light so that you don't, you're not dealing with so much of you being hidden underground and working and not working with you. That's the first map. The second map is all the clues that your body has. So it's body mind. And the third map is the map of vibrational energetic stuff that's happening beyond our body. So the question is, where am I identifying myself and where's the boundary? And different types of therapy are either mind-mind, mind-body, or mind-body together is called the organism, the mind-body or the organism and the environment and the vibrations beyond our body. Going back to the nine dot problem, Oftentimes I need to look outside of the clear, obvious answer. So in therapy, is it a matter of something happening from my environment that I want to deal with and bring that into the type of therapy as well as the body and the mind? Is do I want to bring in just the body with the mind? Do I want to stay just with the mind? And I think those three maps are huge as far as understanding the different types of therapies all types of therapies can go in one of those three categories, which makes life simple if we're looking at the type of therapy I want first of all. Now, when we're looking at the environment, the examples I gave so far are cl close to where the body is. The piece now is, when does my identity end when I'm looking at vibrations and looking at energy, okay? And that is usually called transpersonal rather than personal. And let me give you a definition from No Boundary, the book No Boundary, about transpersonal. And he describes it, Ken Wilber describes it really well. Transpersonal means that some sort of process is occurring in the individual that, in a sense, goes beyond the individual. So if I'm out on a beautiful sunny day and I'm experiencing the warmth and the brightness of the sun, and I'm not particularly dealing with where my identity ends at all, that brightness of the sun, that warmth of the sun is how, as part of who I am, how I'm identifying myself, and having an effect on who I am. If I'm walking into a room where people are having an awful argument, I'm not part of that argument and I can leave the room. However, as I'm picking up on those vibrations and energy, that's having an effect on my body and having an effect on my mind, and it's part of the transpersonal or something that's going on and affecting me, but it's not within the boundary of my body. And most people tend to think of their identity of this is my mind and I'm gonna stay there, or this is my body, how can I possibly have any of my identity being beyond my body? And transpersonal identity means there's all sorts of stuff happening outside of our bodies that affect us, and help to cause our identity at the same time. Let's give a few more examples there. If I am hugging a baby or hugging a, or, or petting a pet or in an embrace of someone that I care, uh, care fondly about, I don't know where my boundary ends. It's not beyond my boundary, beyond my body. I have no idea where my ending of identity is. My mind doesn't know. My body doesn't know. Somehow there's a connectedness going on there that is beyond the body. And the transpersonal bands that these maps are talking about 
is our identity having three levels once again. Mind, body, or my identity can happen beyond my body. And much like the nine dot problem, many people kind of go, can't go beyond my mind or can't go beyond my body. And what we've learned from the nine dot problem is a lot of issues get solved when we kind of go, it goes beyond my mind. It goes beyond my body. It is part of the vibrations and energy that I'm picking up on and sending out at the same time. There are types of therapy that do that. If I want to say that simply, it would be mind, body, and spirit. And I don't mean spirit as far as um, spirituality. I mean spirit as far as going energetic, vibrational part of how I can identify myself as well. To the types of therapists. I'm going to do that slowly. When you look at the map here showing therapies and levels of the spectrum, it literally names types of therapy that focus on the mind-mind or focusing on the ego. And it names other types of therapies that focus on the mind-body. And it finds names other types of therapies that works on the transpersonal or vibrational energetic as well. As we get larger and what we're looking at as therapists, the other pieces are included. So the mind, mind is there if it's mind, body. The mind, mind and mind, body is there if it's the vibrational going beyond our body as well. But let's look at as therapists, because if anyone's studying a type of therapy, the personality of the clinician is going to be as important as the type of study of types of therapy that they've been studying and practicing. So here's my questions there when trying to come up with the therapist that's best for me. And much like buying a pair of shoes, I've got every right to ask questions of a therapist, of a psychologist, of a psychiatrist, so that I get the right fit for myself. So there are four questions in intro counseling class that I say to the students, when, you, when you've got the type of therapy that you want, you've got the right identity and boundary there, looking at the individual therapist, what are questions that'll help you along? And the first one is challenging or supportive. Do you want a therapist that's more challenging or more supportive, that's extremely challenging, that's extremely supportive, or someplace in the middle? And whether someone's doing mind-mind, when someone's doing mind-body, or when someone's doing organism or body and environment, you can find either more or less challenging and supportive therapists. And I think that's a very important question. Okay. The second one would be directive or non-directive. Traditional psychiatry and medicine is you go to the doctor and ask, and say, this is what's wrong, and the doctor will tell you exactly what to do. These days in the world of counseling and psychotherapy, there's a larger spectrum than that. You've got some ther professionals who will have the plan of, I'm in charge here because I've got more information in my training. And you've got a whole group of others that kind of go, no one will ever know you better than you will because no one's ever lived in your body, in your mind, with your vibrations and energy for as long as you've been alive. So if you want someone that lets you lead the sessions and are following you to try to understand what's going on and then trying to come up with a plan, or if you want other professionals that kind of go, I've done all my training, let me direct what's going on because I know better. Once again, types of therapists, for whether it's mind, mind, or mind, body, or organism, environment, you can find directive and non-directive therapists with each of those as well, okay? Third one is thinking and feeling. Many of us lead by being either more analytical or more feeling oriented. And if you go back to many of the other videos, we talk about that again and again and again. But if you're very analytical, do you want a therapist that's going to help you analyze what's going on? Where you're gonna feel more comfortable, but you may not get so much new stuff? If you're very feeling oriented, do you want a therapist who's gonna work with you on a feeling level? So once again, you'll be more comfortable, but you won't get a different perspective. Or if you were very analytical, do you want someone that's gonna work with you on a feeling level? Because that's where the missing clues and pieces of health and healing may be. And again, if you were very feeling oriented, do you want someone that's gonna help you work more on an analytical level just to balance the thinking and the feeling in therapy? Again, going back to the mind, 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 body, and organism, 
environment, you can find that category of therapists with each of those types of therapy. And finally, insight and behavior. Different professionals will spend more time on insight, meaning gathering information, what's going on, what's happening, what didn't work out, what happened in my past, who are people in my life that's doing that, and all that is insight. And others will spend some time doing that and more time going, well, it seems like you play scared in all these situations. Let's move to the behavior change quickly and help you become more bold. Because if I'm gonna spend more time understanding all the places in your life and gathering all that insight, it's information. However, it doesn't cause change yet. Change happens when someone is doing something differently, behaving differently. And again, for each of the categories, once again, mind, 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 body, or organism, environment, you can find therapists that deal with each of those four. So summarizing for a moment, types of therapy, we've got mind-mind, we've got mind-body, we've got organism, which is the mind and body put together and the environment. We've talked about that. There are maps also there for you to look at. And then we have spe specific names of therapies that goes, in that, that goes in those categories from the first map. And then we have the second map here, which looks at different types of therapists specifically that would help you out given the first map of therapies. It can be confusing. It is really helpful when someone understands the game and the art of choosing a therapist as well as they know how to choose a pair of shoes. And I'm done for my part today. Thank you so very much. I'm sure Once Beyond Time or OBT will come in and finish up the video. Be well, good people.